uh, young Japanese boy, boys were give, given enemy alien status. They could not serve in the military. Okay? They're thrown in the internment camp. Uh, it turns out that the United States government needed people to fight for them. And so what the Japanese Americans did, this is a remarkable story, is that they created an all-volunteer force. So they came out of the internment camp and volunteered to fight for the United States government in Europe. They volunteered. They left their families in the concentration camps and went out. This is the story of the 442 and the 100th Battalion. The, the, the 100th Battalion is Hawaii. So Hawaii and Japanese Americans where Pearl Harbor took place. And there, that's a whole new set of stories, but if, if any of you are interested in the history of World War II and talking about a story, that's the one. They didn't just serve the United States government in Europe while their families were behind bars. On leave, they came back and in full uniform went and visited their families behind barbed wire. They are the most decorated, the most decorated unit for its size and longevity in the history of the United States of America. Sure. It's not just that they served. They are, the, they are the most decorated in the history of the United States. And one of the great ironies, sad ironies of this, is one of their last acts was to participate in the liberation of story of how you can do that. And then, of course, many of the Japanese Americans volunteered and ended up serving. By the way, they ended up getting drafted, uh, ultimately, and served in the MIF in the Pacific Theater. And there are people who say, you know, MacArthur is said to have say, said that the length of the war was shortened by a half a year because of the service of Japanese Americans, because they were spies and interpreters and so forth in the Pacific Theater. It's an amazing thing to me that while their families and all of their rights 